Hey everyone, welcome back. Sorry, I forgot to push that button. My mic was muted. Uh, welcome back. This is Tuesday. It is April 16th today. Uh, my name is Levi Woods. This is Drawbridge Finance. Thanks for joining me. This is my public live stream where we take, uh, where I take calls and uh, take questions about any stock you guys want to uh, want to watch. Kevin says he can see me chiming in from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, Mitch is watching from Calgary and we've got Terry wetting my appetite talking about a nice Irish red. Uh, summer is upon us, is it not? It is a beautiful day outside. I'm going to get out and do some yard work as soon as I'm done this stream. So hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, Chad says it sounds good. Thank you so much, everybody. Let me know what stocks you want to look at. Uh, I was quite busy last week, so get in early if you wanted me to cover a, a particular ticker. Uh, my account is up. The sign is green. We're going to jump right into this. We're going to take a look at what's going on in the market. Uh, over here, just above me, we've got the VIX coming down just a little bit. 18.35. We were above 19 yesterday, so down 4% today. A uh, nice little pop in the VIX. Uh, that uh, was was a very nice move uh, yesterday for those who took advantage. Uh, selling premium these last couple of days has been very very nice. You can see this line that I have on my VIX chart. That's kind of the low the low area of the the average range. So when we look at it historically, that's kind of where it it likes to settle uh, around that. We have been trading under that for the better part of a year, and nice to finally see some volatility in the market. Um, obviously not very nice things going on in uh, the Middle East, not uh, particularly good reasons for the volatility index to be up, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, we have to take advantage of it when it comes. Uh, SPY marking at 5.03 down, pretty flat on the day. If we look at the, the daily charts, kind of what is happening, um, very, very consolidated move. This is the one minute chart on the SPY from open uh, to now halfway through the day got about an hour, two hours left in the day, and we have had very, very little range. Uh, Powell was speaking, is speaking. I didn't catch any of it today, uh, but it has not moved the market in any significant way. Uh, NASDAQ, same sort of thing, no, nothing nothing to report here. Just a, a very, very consolidated uh, sideways move that's occurring. Uh, what else is going on? So let's just run these down. So SPX, as I say, flat, uh, NASDAQ flat, 0.0. .0. IWM is the big loser of the day, uh, down half a percent. IWM is marking at 194. Is this an opportunity to get into this? Uh, could could possibly be uh, IWM here on, on my left hand side. This is the one minute chart. If we look back. This is uh, this is showing Tesla. I have to switch to a different view to, to show IWM's chart. Let's just zip back over to. Uh, Let's pull this up and we'll look at the daily candles on IWM just to see where it is. Uh, when when I see this happening, here's the 200 day moving average under the 50 and the 200. I'm looking for opportunity to go long in IWM. Uh, there's multiple different ways we can play it uh, with leveraged funds. Uh, IWM is down on the year so far. So we're, we're trading slightly lower than the year's open, which was right around here. We, we opened around 200 now trading at 194, so down slightly. Uh, but watching this 200 moving 200 day moving average quite closely. Um, I've got uh, Lewis Scars is asking about Reddit. Are we playing Reddit yet? It's pretty pretty new, is it not? Uh, let's talk about Marathon for a second, and we'll jump into Reddit. Uh, Marathon, um, obviously coming down off of its highs. If we look at the last six months, kind of what it's been doing. Uh, question today in my in my chat room about whether or not we should be getting in at ten dollars. Obviously, that's forty percent discount from the current value. I want to show you what the premium is on uh, a company like Mara. If we look at IBKR, if I click on Mara here and we and we pull up this options chain, which is hidden here, we're gonna we're gonna pull up the chain and we're gonna look at uh, May seventeenth. So this is one month out. What is the price of selling a put? Well, we, we get $23 for this. Uh, if we look at the profit profile in this, this is an extremely good return. Uh, this is the 30% uh, move. If we go to a 60% move, uh, we can see the break even on this is going to be a 977. Uh, anything above $10 strike would make $23 if we collected $23 on this. The, the total risk on this trade is $972 max loss. That would be if Marathon went to zero. Now, they're not a profitable company. 
So that is something to consider. Uh, if we look here at the profitability, got too many things, too many arrows. Profitability is a D minus, so not profitable at this point in time. Uh, the valuation right now has come into a good range though, and the growth is, is uh, has potential. So uh, it, we could be looking to go long and adding more shares uh, if the price is right. The premium is great. I mean, I would not just buy Marathon shares, but playing this as a short put gives me about uh, more than a 2% return on capital in 30 days if I chose to play it that way. I can be more aggressive, obviously, uh, trading like, well, you know, the 14 put if, if it was to go up from here. This makes $140 uh, on a $1,200 return, or $1,200 uh, at risk. So this is a, a more than a 10% return on capital for selling the at the money put. Uh, which would be a much better decision, I think, than buying shares. Uh, but uh, some people like to, to take the risk of buying shares. I'm not, I'm not one of those. I would prefer to, to sell covered calls or sell puts to get into the entry. But anywhere in this range between the 10 and 14, I mean, you can even go higher. Great, great opportunity in Marathon right now. Okay, Reddit. Let's take a look at, at Reddit. I'm going to pull this up. RDDT, right? So how long how long has it been trading here? We've got we've been trading since March 21st. So we're we're almost at one month in. Uh, the stock trading at 4162. Uh, no quant rating on this as of yet. Uh, I don't I don't love to play stocks when they're this this young. Uh, but uh, obviously we saw this run up to 68 bucks and now down trading at 40 dollars. Let's look at the premium and see what there is for Reddit. I don't even have it on my list yet, but I'm going to pull it out and take a look. So again, similar type of thing. If we were to look May 3rd, wow, are the earnings coming up already? No, they can't have earnings that early, can they? Let's look at the options AI dashboard. Oh yeah, for those of you who are wondering what the expected move is on on uh, the, that May 17th expiration, this is for Marathon uh, looking like the range is between 11.31 and the, let's hover it over again, 18.21. So that's the expected range based on the option pricing currently. Let's look at the expected range for Reddit. And then we're gonna click on earnings here as well. We're just gonna see when the earnings are. Uh, prior, there's no earnings move, undefined. So expected move for May 3rd is between 35.93 and 47.83, quite a big range. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be betting against the upside on this. If I was gonna play anything naked to the downside, I would be considering like a Jade Lizard or a Naked Put, something like that. Uh, I would definitely be watching this 36.99 level or 35.99 level rather. So let's just zip down there and take a look at how much money we can get for just trading the 36 put. Go the slow way here. 36 we can get. So normally what I'm looking for from, from a decent amount of premium is in a 30 day period, which this is not, this is only 17 days. In a 30 day period, I would be looking to collect about 36 cents. Extremely high uh, potential here in, in something like Reddit uh, because these valuations are massive. This is where I might consider doing, spending a little bit of this money building a little trap um, because what if you did something like this, which has a profit profile. So this collects about $50. The break even on this is $34.75. So outside of the expected range has a massive tent to the downside between $36 and $38. And the uh, premium to, to start the trade is around 30 bucks. So you get 1% uh, return in 17 days if the stock stays the same or goes up with the potential of of making another hundred dollars if it goes down in between 38 and 36 giving you the extremely low break even at 34.75 uh, that is less risk obviously to the downside than playing just the short put if you were to just play the short put you would have uh, a break even around 35.25 Oh, wow, did I just freeze that up or did I lose my mouse? I lost my mouse. Uh, let's just do the uh, 36 here. 
Well, I got to switch over to the trackpad, which is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a hassle, I'm sure. Uh, 36, if we look at the profit profile, we're going to be 3516 uh, right there. Um, 3525 was what I said for the for the break even. That's based on collecting 75 cent credit and having a, a 20, you know, uh, yeah, 75 cent credit. So that's why we get that break even 3525. It's very, very decent um, credit in that uh, that stock. It could just go crashing down and then you end up on the stock. But I would play it on the safe side if I was going to play something like this with no upside risk. Okay, uh, what else are we looking at? Um, I've, I've got one that looks like it's doing good things. EMR. Sure, let's take a look at EMR. Do I have my mouse again? No, my mouse is dead. Emerson Electric. Uh, trading at 111, we've got a quant rating, which is the strong buy from Seeking Alpha. Valuation right now is not great. Everything else is very good. Uh, what do they do here? We've got uh, electrical components and equipment ranked two out of 70 in their industry. Uh, nice. Let's look at uh, the options chain and the dashboard on options AI. Uh, EMR. For those of you who don't know, there are discount codes for both Seeking Alpha and for our Options AI. Those are uh, affiliates of mine that I, I like to promote. They're products that I like to use. If we're looking at the May 10th, let's just go out a little bit further here. Let's look at the May 17th. May 17th, 105, 117. Uh, the expected move is quite small, actually. So looking for only a 5% expected move from the, the current value. The quant rating is strong buy, so I wouldn't be betting any upside risk on this. I would be looking for a, a trade to the downside. It looks like there might be earnings here. You see this little this little um, blip. Let's just pull up the earnings chart and see when it is. Wednesday the first. So uh, sorry, yeah, Wednesday May first. So let's look at the. Yeah, why not? Let's look at the let's look at it as an earnings trade. It's close enough, right? So if we go to EMR, we're going to pull this down. We're going to take a look at the May 17th contracts, which are the regular. I want to see how much money I can get for the 100 put. You know, in this case, uh, the delta is only uh, nine delta. Uh, very unlikely that we're going to get down there. There's not lots of spread in here. I don't love that. Um, I wonder on the other dates, are there better? No. The strike selection, when I say spreads, it's like strike selection is not that great. I, I prefer dollar wide strikes, but if I was gonna play this, obviously it has to be played super simply. So either the half percent return on capital for the 100 put or uh, the 1% return in 30 days by selling the 105 uh, put at uh, for a for dollar five. More aggressive would be the, the 110. Uh, probably wouldn't go higher than that. Could do though. Could easily, you know, just sell the 115. That is the same as buying stock and selling a covered call against it. How do you get the range curves on your chart, like the one you showed on the VIX? Let's take a look. This uh, I have a little short on that. If you look at my shorts, uh, there there's one that shows exactly how to do this. But uh, this little arrow down here. It's a little bit tricky that the settings and I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is in the settings chart up here. So you go to like view chart parameters and then yeah, it's in chart parameters and then you have to, but the best thing to do is just go to the shorts on YouTube, watch my short on it. I show you how to turn it on. Uh, definitely have that, that expected range cone in IBKR. I've been asked that question plenty of times and then you have to make sure that the little arrow down here gets pulled over because that's what shows it uh, moving out. But it is just a, a checkbox that you have to check on. Okay, what else are we looking at? Mike's asking, uh, hey Levi, for your SPLG monthly trade, do you roll your covered calls up with price or just take assignment and start over? Thanks as always. I currently am not planning on ever selling my SPLG trades. What I have done, now I've been in that trade for now a year and a half, the whole idea with it is I just want to have a position where I'm long S&P 500. Now I know that 
uh, statistically, S and P 500 makes about nine and a half percent a year, 9.8 percent over the last uh, 20 or so years is the average. Obviously, years like last year, we had a better year. Uh, this year may end up being a better year as well. Could be worse. Who knows? Uh, you know, it's it, very rarely do we actually fall into that range between like zero and 10 percent. It's pretty um, pretty unusual for that to actually happen over the past 100 years. Normally, we either have above 10% return or below a 0% return, one of the two. Those are the kind of, that's kind of how it splits out. Uh, so right now we're up about what, 7% on the year with a flat move today, we're about 7% on the year. The, the idea with my SPLG positions is I wanted to just have something super simple. I want accounts that I don't have to worry about at all. I just wanna trade 12 times a year, just with covered calls and I want it to be a static uh, potential income. Uh, and I want to make, you know, that average 10% a year. By adding covered calls to that, I have a higher likelihood of getting that 10% almost every single year rather than getting uh, these extremes where we have like a 20% year and then we have a minus 10% year. I just want to make 12% every single year. So I'm targeting 1% a month. For that reason, I never plan on selling the, the stock. Those stocks stay in my portfolio. They just... Uh, generate a dividend, the calls get rolled. Uh, if, the, um, if the calls are generating a credit and they create a cash flow into my account, I use those to buy extra shares. So I always have an odd lot. Uh, so in one of the accounts I have like, I don't know, I'm out, out, up to like 984 shares. So at this point in time, you know, every month I'm buying a couple of shares and then when I when I hit that next lot, when I get over a thousand, I'll start selling 10 contracts instead of nine, and then I'll use that to buy my next lot. And it should just continue to steamroll over time. It has been an absolutely consistent uh, return on capital. That is that one account, that's all I have in it. I'm just tracking it and it is just like a straight line at 1% a month, uh, which is unreal that it can do that. Um, I do have the 59 calls on right now for next month. We are trading, SPLG is trading at, where are we looking at right now? I don't even actually have it on there. I must have it in this list. Oh, my mouse is not working. Uh, SPLG, 59.29. So there, there, you know, there was a, I was humming and hawing about, whether or not I was going to go to the 60. I think I did the 60 in some of the accounts, but I was being quite conservative with these. Uh, S&P 500, obviously, uh, this is the SPLG tracks it, so it works the same as SPY, um, you know, quite a ways above its 200-day moving average. So can be conservative, we can be aggressive. In this, you know, this chart is not indicative of the returns that I'm getting. Uh, it, it, these returns have been outsized compared to the returns that I've made. But my intention is to just make that consistent return uh, month over month uh, and hopefully with very, very little drawdown uh, if it does occur. So that is the plan. Terry Mahoney, CVE, 110 shares by right May uh, 17th, $28 for a TFSA. Love that TFSA trade. Thanks for that. Let's look at uh, this is uh, CVE on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Let's pull up that stock and take a look at it. I, I don't have, I have almost no Canadian stocks on here anymore. It just, I, I hate to sound like a bad Canadian, but it, you know, the, our economy is just not that great. We're, we're, we have the pr projection of being the worst G7 economy moving forward in the next, uh, in the next 30 years. So, Synovus on Toronto, 28, and you did the... 28 by with 110 shares. Yeah, smart little play. Synovus Energy. Boy, that's a rocket, a rocket ship of a chart, isn't it? I, I probably wouldn't be doing that myself, but uh, energy has been hot. This 28, it's just a, that's a pretty tough break even for me. I If I could get a, the 27, I would probably be looking at a 27 just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. Let's look at how much premium there is in here. Uh, that was the May, May 17th. The 28th, you're selling the at the money, you're basically just buying at, at, at the money. The premium in here is 2%. I, if I was going to do this, I would take the, 
a 1% return and have that greater safety in my account, especially if it was a starter position. So here's the stock leg. Uh, yeah, fine. Let's turn that on. And then you said buy 110 shares. I, this is, this is me. This is how I would trade it. Everybody trades with a different, uh, different risk tolerance. 25% chance this arrow is pointing right at 25% chance that we're going to trade above $27. Uh, that is a decent return on, on capital to make 1% plus with some extra shares that could make some money if it really exploded break evens at 2680. So if we were to mark that on the chart at the 2680, uh, we would still be at a very high valuation. 2680 is right in here. So again, right where that arrow is pointing. Uh, if I was buying there, um, I, I feel like I'm paying only a below the 20 day moving average, but I'm paying above the 50 and the 200. Yeah, so this is the 200, that's the 50. Even that might be a little bit, uh, I would, who knows? I mean, energy is a hot, hot thing. So, and Synovus has been around for a long time. Uh, thanks for that trade idea. I, I definitely myself would be trading on that 27, not the 28. Any thoughts on app? I got out of my app today with a very nice gain. Um, just wasn't sure what the market was going to give us today. Uh, where is, let me just insert, I don't have, I have apps on here, but uh, uh, um, I was in and out of this. I did like a, a, a little sneaky trade, a little poor man's covered call when we were uh, down in these lower levels, just looking for the bounce off of this. Um, my max profit was at 71. Stock had rallied up when it was coming down today. Just didn't know what the market action was going to be. Uh, I feel like I have exposure to stocks like this that have just had a massive move. And I would hate to get caught flat footed in this and just say, oh man, that sucked. Like I was in it at, you know, at max, close to max profit. And then it just dove down to 45. Uh, the seeking alpha rating on it is quite good though. So it, it's got good momentum going. We're just not sure. I, I just, you know, I'm always looking at the moving averages. Like this chart, just, oh, you look at that and you're like, yeah, it's going to keep going forever. But when you look at this, you know, this there's a lot of uh, support down here at that 35, 37 range. And there's a lot of volume traded here. So if there was anything to happen in the market, these stocks could just rip right back down to these. This stock could go down way below this. It could go down to 15. So there's a lot of risk in holding stocks. Uh, definitely, if I was trading it, I would be trading it with some limited loss strategies, which is why I used the, the poor man's covered call. Let's take a look at uh, options AI and see what they've got for like a credit spread. Um, could even play this neutral. 31 days out, we've got earnings here. You can see that big bulge. So we would want to trade before that. So let's change this expiration to the third. That's before the earnings. Uh, there's a 6766 put. Uh, you know, it's risking 80 bucks to make 20. So that's a 25% return on capital for very, very uh, small little trade. Uh, we could do a neutral strategy on this, do an iron condor. Uh, there's the 7879 call spread and then the 6766 put spread. So risking 58 bucks to make 42, 74% chance of making money. That's an excellent little trade. Uh, you can see where we, we've had some movement down here. Uh, at the 68 level before, but we bounced off of that. Uh, so if you're willing to take the risk on that, otherwise you could do like a really short duration trade. 55 to 45, basically it's almost a one to one risk reward ratio for the 76, 77 and the, seven, the 68, 67 uh, puts and calls. So 69% probability of profit. Again, it's that green zone right at the previous support. We've had to two twice. We've hit it here on the on the. On the if we if we look over here, this is twice we've touched this level. We're above that. Um, has broken out to the top side and rejected back down. So it really depends on where it's gonna where it's gonna close next week. But if we have a, a flattish week and earnings are starting, so that may not happen. But the volatility is up, so there is opportunity for these types of things in these these markets. 
Red Eyes, hey Levi, how long should it take to get started with Black Swan Hedge? I shorted a trance of ES a few weeks back, but with the recent sell-off, the longs are not going to be purchased at my price. Yeah, it's a difficult time when volatility expands. So if the if you look, I have quite a few shorts that are open right now. Let's go back to the VIX level here. The um, it's all correlated to the VIX. So the VIX is a product of the S and P five hundred. ES is also a product of the S and S and P five hundred. They're the same. So when we when we see this volatility hike, uh, it is not a not a easy conversion over the black swan hedge anything that was opened yesterday if we see any sort of volatility contraction i would expect that in uh in about six days these will convert when we enter when the vix is low especially anything was that's open like this march 20th to, to april 1st when it was really low at this 13 handle the uh going into um what am I trying to say here? The uh, moving out, you're you're looking anywhere upwards. I think the longest one I've ever had convert was 33 days. So if you did the the March 28th entry, uh, then I would expect it's not going to uh, convert until uh, into the beginning of May. So quite a ways away, another full two weeks. And if the volatility stays high, that could happen um, uh, even slower than that. They, they are not, you know, uh, trades that are uh, consistent every single time in their timing. When they're put on in a down day, which is what the mechanics of the trade are, the black swan hedge. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, I do have videos specifically on the black swan hedge. It's a very popular video. I have a spreadsheet that tracks it. It's an excellent trade. I, lo I love it a lot. But uh, you have to keep it layered on. You can't, you can't be like just, you know, going in one one day full full contract size if i was going to play if my plan was to play like 10 hedges i would use um i would just multi put those on week after week or on those down days so that i'm not all 10 in at once i would i would layer into the trades uh if i was if i wasn't able to do 10 i would trade it on mes because that's the beautiful thing about it is if you trade MES, which is one tenth the size of ES, then you you can do 10 MES, which is the equivalent of one ES. So it's very, very nice that way. Now, the liquidity in MES is not as great and there's a little bit more uh, cost when it comes to um, uh, fees, but the the hedge itself works extremely well so uh good luck with the trade and uh yeah so i expect that it will take a little while but those it will come down unless we see a sell-off it is something to consider you know your sizing like what what do you have on because when you have uh when you put on the shorts you have full risk to the downside until those get converted uh we have to we have to be a little bit aware of that there's other hedges we can do you can either buy puts probably a little late once the volatility is already up, uh, but we, we can do a diagonal spread to kind of take off some of that risk at the beginning to get our first hedge going. Red eyes, should I just put on another three shorts? Well, definitely like yesterday was an excellent time to put on the three shorts in, and, and it all depends on the sizing of the account. I mean, you don't wanna go over leveraged because if they start to sell off, even though they're way far out of the way, I'm trying to use my mouse here, but it's dead. Uh, they are way out of the way. Uh, the, um, you know, we've oh yeah, we had this this pretty significant move here to the downside. The if, if your plan was to size up to ten contracts and you've you've done your first your first lot. Oh sorry, I, I like lots. So like one lot would be three contracts. Your second lot would be another three contracts. Um, if the plan was eventually to get in, then absolutely. This, the second one should be added while the volatility is up. Because if you go out here, if I was gonna open one today, market is down slightly here, 0.36. Where are, we, are we having a little bit of a move? Still in the range. SPX is right at 40.53, or uh, sorry, at 50.44. Um, if we were to look out in time at EAS, what are we selling now? Like July 31st, I think. 
bear with me as I scroll. So that's 106 days. Uh, the, the, the strike, like I have been selling the 3200s for, for quite a while. I'm just going to click on all for a second here. Uh, and you can see those 3200s. So normally in the last three months with the volatility low, these 3200s, 3100s, uh, that's where the $3 credit was. We can see we're getting $5 credit for the 3200 right now. Um, so I can get the 2900 July for $3 and uh, 25 cents. So we're a full 200 points below. Just to put it in perspective, let's just zoom out and look at where that is. I mean, 2,900 compared to this chart is crazy low. I'm not saying it can't get there. It just it, this these very much are black swan hedge trades. Um, and we should. So here's 2,900 there. That's the market would have to to drop almost 50% before those were assigned. Uh, the problem is the velocity and the margin expansion that happened. If you don't have black swan hedges already in play, fully formed ones or par partially formed ones, you don't have any hedges, then consider opening them as a diagonal. So sell sell the 2900s and then go out, go to like a month out. Let's look at the May 17th, that's 30 days. And then just buy the um, 2900s here. Well, you can push, you can even buy bigger ones. Just buy like a, you know, buy five of those. The, the, the first hedge is gonna cost you some money because it, you're gonna be out this 100 bucks or something. It's not gonna be massive, but you're getting the hedge already. Now the hedge starts from day one. You have a, a, a still a pretty massive max drawdown, like nineteen thousand. If you are holding this to to expiration on the um, and the, and the market did drop, so you still have a valley of death. But if the sell off happened before we got into this range, then you would it would make money. It, it starts as a hedge right away, and it still starts for a credit. So in this case, you'd get about three hundred dollars deposited to your account. And using part of that for these this one month of of long protection, and then by that time, uh, hopefully you've got your other hedge formed, and then then they're, they're covering one another, layering up. It's important to look at the overall uh, curve, and and so starting it like that, uh, buying buying five contracts in the front month is uh, is a, starts you in the hedge right away. Terry says thanks. Um, uh, Red Eye says, love your spreadsheet. It is so helpful. I'm glad. Thank you so much. I, you know, the, my spreadsheets take a little while to build. So I appreciate that feedback. Uh, if you guys are interested in any spreadsheets, uh, I'm just trying to drag this over here. Am I able to do that? Gonna do like a thumb and a finger. I, I, I have like a love hate with trackpads. Let me, uh, I've got the rolling options record keeper. Obviously you guys can go over to Drawbridge Finance Spreadsheets. Uh, this is all my social media links, but um, if you go over to spreadsheets on drawbridgefinance.ca, there's the Black Swan Hedge uh, Tracker, 29 bucks, or it is included in the Rolling Options Record Keeper. You, you get the Black Swan Hedge in this, uh, which I currently have on sale for 14% off, which is pretty great. Um, and uh, anybody that signs up for Patreon gets the Rolling Options Record Keeper if you're an options tier member. So if you're thinking about joining uh, Patreon, then that's a great way to do it because you get all of that bundle. Um, and my spreadsheets, I like to think that they're pretty good. I've been designing spreadsheets now for longer than I'd care to admit since like the, the 90s. And uh, I, I try to make them uh, user friendly and they're fully customizable. So if you guys want to change things to make them suit your needs, like add columns, things like that, a lot of that is quite easy to do. I try to keep them uh, built in a way that you're able to, to modify them in the way that uh, you would like. So uh, I, there's no easy way to record that diagonal that I was showing you. Uh, and yes, I, I do think that that diagonal is a smart play, especially if you already have short puts. So if you have like one set of short and then you have another set of a diagonal, then now you've got one working and one not. And so you've at least, you're not, you're unlikely to lose money uh, if the market was to, to drop off significantly. Volatility expansion jacks up those trades too. So it's important to just have more longs than you have shorts. That's the, that's the key with those. Okay, let's ask, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to ask me a few more questions. 
Is there any other trades you want to talk about? What's your favorite trading style? Like for complex options, uh, you know, we have so many different trades that we trade in the chat room. What, what trade do you guys love uh, that I would love to know? Uh, so let me know. Is it just like simple? Is it like credit spreads? Is it condors, covered calls? Uh, in the meantime, I will pull up. I will pull up. What are we going to look at? I don't, I don't, I don't really want to stare at the SPX. Uh, it's just kind of moving in this range as kind of we expected for today. Um, do we have, oh, I see mates asking a question in the, in my discord chat. Um, I have more questions about covered call strategy. Are you picking the stocks with growth potential profitability and nice premiums? When the stock reaches top price, let's say half year, one year swing uptrend, do you eventually sell the stock or continue to do in the money rolls on the downtrend? When do you consider the stock is no longer acceptable for rolling the covered calls? Thanks. The, it, it all depends on uh, return on capital, mate. So if you're, looking at, uh, if you're looking at a stock, I think when we talk about a covered call strategy, it has to um, be a stock that we think is gonna go up. If the stock has reached the pinnacle, uh, let, let's let's say let's just look at BA for a second. Uh, BA is trading at one sixty nine. I am looking at this trend, and it is it is coming down. I had a long position. I had a neutral position on uh, BA. I decided to exit uh, the this trade today for a loss. Uh, the the reason that I'm exiting is because I think that the momentum is poor. I think that the, the news that is going on with their, their engineering, their valuation is already an F rating. Although they're profitable at this point, I just don't see the stock reversing and, and moving back up. So I, I am pretty discerning when it comes to what, what I wanna hold and what I don't wanna hold. And when it comes to long stock positions, I have to assume with a covered call that the stock is going to go up in price. The minute I'm looking at the chart and thinking, oh, I think this stock is gonna go down, and continue this trend, why would I be holding a covered call? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, if, if we had played Boeing up and then it had started this downtrend here, I would be exiting as soon as I thought we had, we had peaked and moved over. So when, when we talk about stocks like Marathon, uh, you know, which are, let's look at, like, let's look at something like Disney, Disney, which is kind of the top of its range. I mean, if Disney is going to stay in some sort of range, uh, we are definitely at an inflection point. I, I would be selling any time that the stock was up above these moving averages. Once it broke that kind of 110 level, uh, this would be a time where I would consider getting out of it because what I don't want to do is give back my gains. So it, it really depends. When I talk about like SPLG and the reason that I like to play SPLG is because it's a basket of stocks. So I don't have, the swings aren't as extreme. You know, even if we do see a downtrend in SPLG, it is not going to be crazy. We're going to pick up buying at this 55 level in all likelihood because the market goes up over time. The US economy is, is not in a great shape but the S&P 500 has an exposure to uh, enough global assets that I believe that this is going to continue to be able to, to move upwards at a consistent rate like it always has. has. So if we just you know went back to like the weekly can the candles and we looked at the, what the momentum is. My assumption is that the momentum is going to continue. With, I don't mind holding this through those troughs Whereas individual stocks, I have to pay more attention to the up and down. So I hope that answers your question. I'm, I, I am looking for positive momentum. And when a stock is trading above or even an index is trading above, then I am, I am looking for, um, I'm looking to take my profits at that point in time or reduce my position. And that's something that can be done is you can just reduce the position, can work out very well. You see IWM, um, has it doesn't perform super well every year. So, you know, small, small sector stocks. So uh, there's 2000 stocks in there, but they're, they're all small cap. Um, got hit really hard in COVID. You know, this was a big, big drawdown in IWM, the huge rally up, uh, but very, very slow moving. Premium on this is substantially better than on SPY products. So there's this blend of like, if you really wanna be aggressive with the covered calls, 
IWM may be a better product for you. It is more volatile, but uh, there's more premium in it. So, and then QQQ is obviously the biggest one of them all. Uh, most volatility, most option premium. So if you're looking at the top three, uh, they all have a similar trend line uh, because they all track the, the market in, in slightly different ways. Uh, QQQ uh, obviously at uh, uh, an elevated area right now. So we've got some big stocks in here holding this up. Many of the stocks in the NASDAQ are actually not performing all that well. We just have you know seven big stocks that are, that are holding it up. So thoughts on going long on snow? Yes, let's, um, let's look at snow. I feel like I played snow just recently. I can't even remember the outcome. Sometimes I just jump in with limited loss trades. The, the, the profitability is uh, A. The, sorry, I'm going to kill Discord for you guys. Sorry, I apologize. I, I'm some, somehow a little bit immune to that beeping, but I know it can be annoying. So I'm going to just turn that off. The valuation is still uh, a D. If I was going to play Snow with $150 stock, I would just play it with, with uh, spreads. That's how, that's how I would run snow. If I was doing it, I would, it, there's too much potential for it to, to fall further than I would want it to. Um, there are earnings coming up. Let's just look. So the 22nd are earnings. I don't know why we're not getting an expected move here. Let's just zip over to the options chain and take a look. Snow is on my regular repertoire. The it's a 31 IBR and it is down today, trading right at the 150. Uh, if I was looking at this chart, these are the weeklies. Let's go back to dailies. Let's see if there's an area where there might be some support, and that would be right here at 138. So the I don't really like to buy. Like this is an ideal time to look at stocks. What I don't want to do is have my break even too, too high. So depending if I wanted to go long, I mean, I wouldn't be super aggressive with this. I, I wouldn't expect it to go back up to 225. I would be happy if I was like making the 175 level. So let's look at the 31 day and see if there's any premium on the call side. There's a dollar 30 in premium on the 175 call. So if I wanted to just go long and, and I wasn't worried about the risk to the downside, that's the simplest way is just sell the 175 put. I'm potentially making up to $2,000. My break even is 150.29, which is just 20 cents lower than the current value. Depends on what you fill for it as well. So I would hope I'd get a slightly better fill price than that. Uh, that would give me my most upside potential, 52% probability of profit. So slightly better probability than just buying stock alone. Uh, and then obviously I could go up way, way down. If I just sold like the 150, um, I have potential now of making 600 bucks. Uh, my break even is 143. So I have a $7 break even uh, below the current price, which is amazing on 31 days. That's before earnings, a uh, huge amount of premium in there. Of course, there's a huge amount of premium because there's a huge amount of risk. From the from a 1% perspective, if I'm trying to make 1% a month, all I have to do is sell the 130 put so I have $20 of potential movement. Let me show you a little uh, trade that may work out here. If, if you sold a little more aggressively, sold the 18, so we collect $2. Can we buy a $2 spread here from the, the 150? This is netting us zero entry but basically you have a flat spot. If you want to get, get long, this makes $460 max profit. Break even is uh, break evens right around 135. So you're basically flat in this area between 135. Let me zoom in here a little bit because we don't expect it to move that much anyways. So this is a 30% move. The, you know, basically flat. Uh, and then with the potential of making up to $500 no credit collected to start this. This is a, a very simple trade setup using the credit from selling the short put to then buy a call credit spread or call debit spread rather. Uh, then you have the potential very bullish, bullish trade. The other thing you could do is sell a little bit more premium on the top side. So you could do like the 
Is this, is this, this must be after earnings. Where's it? When's earnings? I'm so confused. Why is there so much premium in there? Earnings supposedly the 22nd. There's a ton in there. So this one would collect you credit. You basically got a profit 10 to the upside if we wanted to get long. If the stock went between 155 and 170, make $500. If it goes anywhere between 135 and uh, anywhere up, then you basically make m m nothing. But what a what a huge profit range here for uh, for a pretty simple setup. You know, you've, you're basically using the credit from selling the the uh, put to then buy a call condor. So you're buying a, a bull a debit call spread and then you're selling a, a bearish call debit spread and that creates a, a condor to the top side. It's basically put on, it's financed by the short put. So this is for large accounts, obviously $13,000 trade. So you don't, you don't want to trade that uh, too willy nilly. Otherwise, let's look at the dashboard. Let's just look at a neutral on, on snow. Uh, let's look at a iron condor and we'll do that same May 17, 31 days. Here's the expected move between 164, 136. So that, that trade was actually, you know, that $500 zone, if you were to mark it on there, would be here from, from this level up to the 170. So if it, if it was in this area, I'll mark it in blue. Let me just switch over. If, if that trade, if it was here, you lose, make nothing. And if it's here, you make nothing above above this but in that orange box you could make 500 bucks so even if it just drifted up nicely there and and no risk to the upside um otherwise you could do that that first trade that i put on that has basically a huge profit zone massive if if you don't sell that that um the the bear call portion of it Let's just go back. If we just took off these last two legs, so don't do the 170, 175. If you uh, if you just did it as the selling the 135 and then buying the 150, 155, you have the potential of making 500 bucks with very little risk. You're basically risking about whatever the the uh, debit is to open. So like $18 uh, if if it trades between 135 and 150. Uh, if you're very bullish on it, then just move that put up. Now you've got a, a profitable zone. Your break even is just much higher, 139. So you move the break even up by five bucks. But now you have a profitable zone, $75, just about a half percent return here, and then could make up to 575 at expiration if it was to, to, to rally upwards. So very, very smart setup for those long stocks. Okay, what else do we have? Long UNH trade, no. I'm going to say no. no. Why Why do we think UNH? Like, uh, playing UNH is hard because it just... Oh, sorry. I'm lying. What am, what am I thinking? Yes. I'm confused. I was thinking of... Um, what was I thinking of? I can't even recall. Do you know the oil ETF? Whatever. Is it UNG? I was thinking of UNG. Yeah. The natural gas. I was thinking... I thought you meant UNG. UNH? Yes, um, I like UNH. Let's 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 look at UNH. Uh, quant ratings a hold, A plus profitability, valuations a D. We've had a little bit of an up move in the last little bit here. Looking at the one month, uh, a little bit of a surge from this 440 level. Uh, didn't we talk about this up 22 bucks? Didn't we talk about this just the other day? Um, what is going on? What's the news there? May 20th, 17 days. I mean, it just had a $20 move. So you have to kind of take that into consideration. If it was to go down $22, it would be at $4.45. You're only getting paid 1%. So definitely the, the skew is to the upside. Uh, definitely looking for this momentum to the upside. Uh, if I was going to trade that, I mean, let's look at, I, I love Seeking Alpha for this because then I don't have to think as much. I mean, it's, this is part of the, not Seeking Alpha, uh, options A to I. This is why I use it because it's just in line with how I think in general. So if I'm bullish on this, if I want a long position, uh, can I do a, a credit spread for that, for that 17, 31 days away? Um, 
max risk 800 bucks, max gain 174. So we're looking for about a 20%, 21% return on capital, 72% probability of profit uh, if it stays above this, this range. Can we be more aggressive? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, risking 2000, max gain 870. So you're making a, a, a return on capital 40%, 59% probability of profit. If you want to be pretty aggressive with that, nice little way to, to uh, leverage some funds without taking that huge downside risk. So, and of course, you can be as aggressive as you want with these. Like you could, if you thought it was going to just rally right up, just keep sliding it up here. Uh, $1,200 risk to make 1700 so you would doubt more than double your money if uh, stock went above the uh, 490 level. Stock's trading at 470 so up $24 today. Could easily go back up to that level. Uh, so any of these trades work, just depends on how aggressive you want to be. I love using credits, pr credit spreads for this. Um, of course, you can do it as a, as a debit call spread as well. So you can just do it as a call spread. Max risk 770, max gain 12, uh, 30, only a 39% probability of profit. So this is a more aggressive trade, but play with that and see. UNH earnings this morning. So earnings have already passed. They were obviously good, up 22 bucks, but it, it's still in the range. Uh, what what do the earnings reports say? Is the is the real key is like what what is it just a flash in the pan, uh, or that we're looking for like long term growth? If you if you want to look like way out, I mean, what if like what what can we do if we want to play way way out? Like, is there value here in going out? Uh, you know, risking twenty seven hundred dollars to make potentially forty two hundred forty four percent probability of profit uh, just by buying a call spread and saying, well, what if it returns to these values? These these long trades can work extremely well. The other thing we can do is do uh, credit spreads for for the same sort of thing. We risk thirty eight hundred to make eleven hundred sixty eight percent probability of profit. Uh, basically, just let that sit. This return, even annualized on on two seventy six, is quite good. The problem is, of course, that if we lose one hundred percent, we lose everything. So you you have to you have to play within the. The, the, the range that you want. But there's lots of options out there. That's literally why they're called options, right? Because we get the choice of doing whatever we want. Okay, what else do we have? I feel like I'm going to uh, push this button that says join the Discord group. And then I'm going to talk about my social media for a second. We've got the, the tiers. I have all the spots available for the VIP coaching right now. So if you guys are interested in that i do take up to two vip uh, patrons where we actually get to do like live zoom calls and like really do a deep dive into uh, those positions so if you're thinking about that like if you're an options tier member and you want like that extra level of service i mean my discord is pretty great already um, there's lots of great chat about the specifics but if you're looking for that one-on-one -on -one, i do offer that i do have two spots available um, the other thing that i should point out is the social media uh, if you are on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, I am going to start running some contests on those platforms. I'm going to be a little more aggressive in my social media outreach on those platforms. So I would I would recommend to you guys to go over to find me, Drawbridge Finance, at all three of those, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and, um, and uh, TikTok. And the only one that's different is my Twitter account has like, it's harder to find because I don't have all the letters in it. I, I don't even have a button for it, but uh, I do have links down below. If you guys will go to my link tree, you can click on any of my social media things. I do post on Twitter uh, and uh, I, I do uh, do trade callouts. And what I'm going to be doing is doing trade callouts uh, for like basically free alerts that are happening on all of those platforms. So if you don't follow me on all of those places and you're like use Instagram, then uh, check it out because we're going to do some exciting stuff there coming up, which is going to be fun. So I'll put those up one more time. So that's uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all drawbridge finance. And watch out for scammers on there. There's tons of people that like impersonate me, which is terrible. Jimmy Trader, SoFi sell six put by the eight call, buy 100 shares, 30 day trade. Jimmy Traders, I love when you chime in. Let's take a look at SoFi. Uh, thank you for joining as always. And uh, let's look at this trade idea. I keep reaching for that mouse and it is not working today. Uh, it's 
funny, I have a, like a rechargeable batteries in my mouse and I, and I never change it before I, I start. And they usually die like the morning of before my streams. Um, so let's, so then I get a chance to tra to uh, change the batteries. So seven, yeah, okay, because so far I was trading here at $10. This is a much better valuation. So we're at the eight, the seven. And what are you saying? You're saying buy 100 shares, sell the covered call. Okay, so let's let's build that without buying the, the covered call. Let's build that same thing uh, or without buying the shares. I don't know why you would buy the shares. You're going to sell the six put, which is an agreement to, to buy shares. We're going to sell the covered call. So we've got two premiums coming in and then we're going to buy, uh, buy 100 shares. What does this profit profile look like? So that's what it looks like, right? So what if we wanted this profit profile where we can make 120 bucks? What if we just did this? If you can sell a put in an account, then you can do this trade. You can sell two short puts. There you go. There's your 120 bucks. Don't have to buy the stock unless there's some sort of dividend. I don't think so if I turn, pays a dividend, do they? I don't think they do. There'd be no, there's absolutely no reason to buy that stock. Um, just looking for the dividend here. It does not pay a dividend. So there's no reason to hold the stock. So if you want to make that potential profit, uh, that's May, that's May 3rd, but you could do it on May 31st. Sorry, May 17th, May 17th, May 17th. Um, I'm just pulling up these so that they're in the correct date. This is uh, get a credit of 138 bucks. If SoFi trades above $8, you get to keep the whole thing. Uh, if it goes down, you're on the hook for buying, you know, basically buying the shares or rolling these short puts. That's the trade I would take. No need to buy the stocks. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are liking that. Thank you for chiming in the last minute. And it is time we are going to, I'm going to push this button that says, let's get rich together because that's what we're trying to do. If you guys have any questions uh, and that I haven't answered, hopefully I generate more questions uh, because that brings you guys back so we can talk some more. Uh, but uh, I am here to help. So if you want to send me an email, go ahead. Uh, I always try to respond to those in a timely manner. And obviously my Discord, you guys are welcome to join me there anytime. Just head over to Patreon. At least sign up for like the free alerts on Patreon because then you'll see my free alerts as well. Very, very easy to do that. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care.